Hey guys, Cam here from PhoneDog.com and I'm kicking off a new series which I'm really excited about where we look back at some of the coolest and most iconic retro phones of all time and this is the Motorola Razr V3. Now there aren't many handsets that when they're released they kind of have this wow factor about them. You just see them and you think, oh my word. Why have we never thought of making something this good looking before? It's ultra thin, it's got these really sharp angles on it, the keypad is almost completely flush and got this metallic feel. The body is made almost entirely of anodized aluminium. The only part that isn't, I guess, is like there's a plastic part on the bottom here. Because metal obviously isn't transparent to radio signals so they need a plastic part on it somewhere so that was at the bottom part on the panel here could find as many superlatives as you want but they would not quite describe how cool this thing was when it was released and it became one of the most iconic and one of the most popular phones of all time in terms of specifications there's not really much to shout about here even when it was launched some of the specs were kind of not as good as some of its competitors. It has a VGA camera on it, so it doesn't even have a megapixel camera. And of course, VGA stands for Vicious Gigantosaur Ass Cots. Or Very Good Aperture, or something. 640 by 480 pixel camera, which means when you're taking shots on it, it's not very sharp, it's quite fuzzy. The screen wasn't too sharp either, because that was only a few pixels. The main display on this thing was 176 by 220 pixels resolution which means of course that it's not very sharp you can't do a lot with it but it did have a color screen which was cool uh, and it had a primary screen and a secondary screen on the outside and the outside screen was really useful because it told you when you got a text message or when you were receiving a call or when you need to charge a battery or any little pop-up notifications would show on the little screen on the outside and it was, it was cool for the time, it was awesome. One thing I did really like about it and, and something I guess that kind of makes it usable is that the earpiece was on the top here and the mouthpiece was on the bottom just above this kind of chunky chin bit at the bottom edge and it kind of fits nicely where you would expect it to be so the earpiece would be right by your ear and then this microphone would be at the bottom right by your mouth. It worked really nicely. The mechanism was cool too. I like the way that it kind of just flipped open and shut. You could do it one-handedly and you could kind of do that for hours. Uh, in terms of other hardware, you've got this keyboard that kind of cuts your fingers as you type on it and it was pretty difficult to type on. Uh, you've got a volume switch on the left-hand side. On the top and the right, you have these kind of voice action buttons which didn't work very well. And compared to today's phones, it's a very small device. It may not be the thinnest when it's closed, but in hand, it does take up much less space than, let's say, the likes of the HTC One. So all in all, it really was a case of form over function because it looked really nice, but actually to use, there were better phones out there. But that didn't matter because this is one of the coolest phones ever made, and it was definitely the coolest phone out on the market at the time. 2G only, GPRS, it didn't even have Edge on it, definitely no 3G. You could send picture messages and emails and it had a really basic WAP web browser and a massive 5.5 megabytes internal storage. Thank goodness the V3i came out a little later with, with an expandable memory card slot because it needed it. Now we're all used to having batteries well over the thousands of milliamp hours and this was under a thousand. 640 milliamp hours would get you about seven hours talk time. Now one thing that wasn't really a priority for manufacturers back in those days and almost certainly not for Motorola was a really easy to use and intuitive operating system. Whatever they decided to put on here ended up being one of the most convoluted and frustrating methods of doing anything. Sending a text message took about a bazillion steps before you press send and the message went. You had all sorts of options to enter subjects and put contacts in. It's not as simple as it is now where you just simply carry on a conversation thread. Each individual message shows up each individually in your inbox, kind of like email. Worse than email, probably. Now, of course, the phone also featured predictive text. And by predictive, I mean really annoying. But it was frustrating and then some settings that you think should be in the main settings menu weren't and they were in the individual app settings and you had to find things and it was a bit annoying. Now Bluetooth worked but then actually trying to use it again wasn't the best experience in the world. And like I said already, form over function was definitely the key with the Motorola and does that make it a bad phone? 
Not at all, because this is going to be one of the phones that everybody remembers for a long time, whereas the ones that may be concentrated more on usability and ease of use in terms of operating system and software are not going to be remembered as much. Now, it did have some built-in games too, in case you got a little bit bored, you could play billiards or golf, and I can guarantee you it would take you a few hours out of your day, just because it was so difficult to play on this thing. I mean, trying to change the direction on the billiards game or the golf game and make it accurate was just ridiculous. Um, screen was a bit grainy, so animations weren't exactly smooth, but who cares? It's a Motorola V3. That's all that matters. I guess the sad thing about the Razer series is that after the first one and maybe the V3i which came afterwards, the Razer name didn't really ever live up to the same hype ever again afterwards. They tried creating slimmer and longer versions. They tried creating all sorts of different versions like the V9 and the V8. But they were never really as breathtaking and they didn't catch anyone's attention like this did when it was first launched because there was nothing like it on the market and that's why it will always remain one of the best phones of all time. If you have any suggestions about phones you want to see featured on this series, please feel free to get in touch or use the comments below. I'm on Twitter, I'm at CIP underscore Cam. I'll see you again soon.